What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Bond's apartment. I am Luke, of course. This is, and I feel like I say it a lot, but this is truly the most special video I have brought thus far to my channel. I've got tons of guests coming up in this video talking about the most sentimental or special watch in their collection. Various members from the Bond community. I started with just members of the United States because if I did across the world, this video would be like two hours long. So that I will get to eventually. But before I get into the guests I do have, I will talk about three of my most special watches. Number one is the watch that got me into watches and James Bond. It is the GoldenEye Quartz Seamaster Professional as seen on Pierce Brosnan, who is of course my Bond. I was born in 91, so he was the Bond I grew up with. He was the Bond that made me fall in love with the character and the franchise and watches. And this is one that took me a long time to get and find the right one. And uh, it's kind of why we're even talking today is probably because of this watch, truly. Number two has become my everyday. It is the Skyfall Planet Ocean, not the limited Bond edition. I did not want the Bond edition, but I wanted this one. This is the one he wears in the pre-title sequence of Skyfall. It's 42 millimeter, Seamaster Planet Ocean, 8500 automatic movement with the see-through case back. I'm starting to get very into exploring the actual workings of watches and their movements. So I love looking at this watch all the time. But my most special watch in my collection is actually this Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. It's quartz movement from my father. So he wore this watch for a long time while he was working. It was given to him by an owner of his company. And then when he retired, he actually found another one of these in his desk. And I said, well, you gotta give me one of them. When he finally agreed to it, I was like, you know what though? I don't want the one that's been sitting in your desk. I want the one that you have worn and scratched and beat up over the last how many years. That to me is more special. So he gave me this one. I love my dad for this. He's one of my best friends. I've got the best parents on the planet incredibly supportive. They watch all these videos, so thank you. And yeah, those are my three. But let's, uh, instead of me just continuing to talk your ear off, let's go in and see all the different wonderful people that took the time to help me make this very, very special video. Let's take a look. Hey there, y'all. Merry Christmas. It's your good buddy, Head of Section. How are you doing? I hope the year finds you well. Uh, our good friend, our mutual friend, Luke Taggart, asked me to do a watch check. And I said, I gotta confess, I haven't yet graduated to the Omega Club just yet. Uh, he said, that's fine, just show us what you got. So, um, I do get a lot of compliments on this watch. I will say this, my wife, I can't take credit, my wife got me this for my birthday one year. It's a Tizo. And the only time I know that James Bond wore a Tizo was in Live and Let Die. I couldn't even tell you what model this one is. I know I've got the box for it somewhere and I can't find it. Uh, it's a little different than your average Tizo. If you look them up, you can see the numerals pretty clearly on most models. This one does not, which I kind of like. So it's got a little bit of that Omega vibe without totally going in that direction. I really do like the blue face on it, and I think it goes really well with the leather strap. So again, like I said, uh, it's an interesting mix of the, the brown, the silver trim, and the blue face. And again, I do get a lot of people ask me about it. Uh, coworkers, friends, they, they ask, you know, uh, what kind is that? Where'd you get it, et cetera? Um, so there you go. There's my watch, and I hope everybody's having a great Christmas. I hope uh, the year has been kind, and I know you're probably looking forward to 2024 just like I am. So again, Merry Christmas. Luke, thanks, buddy, and I'll see you all very soon. Hey, everybody. Evan Eastman with Bond Brothers. Um, when I think about my Bond watch collection, my two Omega watches, got to start right here, all right? This is the... Planet Ocean model from Casino Royale, the big size. I think this is the perfect Bond watch, quite frankly. Um, I know it's big, but it works for my wrist, it works for my hand, and I love this thing. You can dress it up, you can dress it down, it looks great um, with t-shirt and jeans, and it looks great with a suit. I love this watch. I wear it probably more than any other watch in my collection. Bought it used, obviously, Casino Royale era. Um, but I sent it in to Omega, and my gosh, it took a little while to get back, but it was worth the wait. Thing came back brand new, and I couldn't be more blown away at how pristine 
it was. Um, I wear it a lot. So it's got some dings, it's got some nicks, it's, it's worn as it should be, and I love this watch. But it is not my first luxury watch. It's not my first Omega. That distinct honor goes to this. This is the blue Seamaster Professional with the uh, wavy dial. Um, I've got it on the no time to die style uh, strap right now, but this watch right here, my first luxury watch, my first Omega, I've wanted a blue Seamaster Professional since I first saw GoldenEye, and this was something that I worked for. This is something that I saved for. Um, I had a list of goals, of uh, things that I wanted to accomplish before I felt I had earned the right um, to buy something like this. And um, I remember I had this list at my desk early on in my career, and um, I had a big Omega logo, and I must have drawn over that, um, the Omega logo with highlighters and Sharpies countless times, um, because I knew every time I knocked something off my list, it brought me closer to this. And uh, the day that I finally got to pick this up, man, really takes me back. So I, I absolutely love this watch. I, I reserve this watch now for big meetings, um, more uh, bigger event occasions, but both of these here, I absolutely love these watches. And um, I'll tell you what, there's, uh, there's really nothing like getting your first Bond watch. Hey everyone, Graham here with Bond Brothers. So I'm here to talk to you about my watch, and that's this guy right here, uh, the No Time to Die Seamaster. Uh, this is my one and only in the collection uh, as of right now. And uh, it means a great deal to me, you know, being a, a, a member of the Bond community and being a, a, just a lover of all things Bond related um, and being a child of the 90s. I do remember uh, the Seamaster uh, being the watch that I saw on James Bond's wrist the first time I ever saw a Bond film when I saw Goldeneye. Um, and, uh, you know, being obviously not in a position to buy that watch at that time as a child, um, but, you know, getting to see the the release of this watch and of No Time to Die, uh, to go to the theater and see the film, and then, you know, a year later be able to say, you know, I, I can... I can buy that watch. Um, that's pretty special. Uh, I think any mem member of the Bond community can probably relate to that. Um, but beyond that, even just in my personal life, this watch has been here for the first year of my son's life, my first son, and it'll be here for the birth of my second son here any minute. And, uh, and that's pretty cool. And one day I'll be able to look back at all those photos and maybe even this video showing you guys this watch and, uh, and pass it down to, uh, to my sons one day. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's one of the many things that I love about watches. And uh, I'm glad I got to share that with you guys today. Hi everyone, Lorenzo here from Omega Bomb Watches. Um, I'm here to tell you about my favorite watch from my collection, my ultimate favorite, um, most sentimental, um, one I can't live without, one if the building's on fire that I have to grab. Uh, it'll definitely be, um, my 1967 vintage Omega Seamaster chronograph from Spectre at the end. This watch to me is just absolutely priceless. It was a gift for my wife, uh, two Christmases ago. It was definitely one I had been pining for for a very long time and we share it. So it's nice cause, uh, it's something we both wear. Um, sparingly, uh, it's not like we wear it all the time because it is, um, a delicate piece, but uh, as you can tell, the band itself is kind of small right now and that probably wouldn't fit my wrist. So looks like she wore this one last, but, uh, yes, this is the one that I would say I can't live without. Um, I'll give you an extra one. My favorite one, if I had to wear one all the time for the rest of my life, it'd be my 300 Spectre from... Specter, <laughs> but um, between these two watches, I mean, these are, I mean, night and day in difference in the, the type of watches they are, but uh, definitely um, they have a lot of meaning to me and they're, they're big parts of my collection. Um, both I wore my wedding day, uh, this one I wore for the ceremony of the vintage, and then for, um, for the reception, I wore my Specter on a custom 
John Rousseau uh, Alcantara strap that I had created by them, um, which I wear from time to time. But uh, yeah, those are definitely my two main pieces. Another fun fact about the vintage watch is me and Cassandra, which, let's see if I can find it here. Oh, there it is. We just had an extract on by Omega, which is really cool. And an extract basically tells you the origin of your watch and when and where it was, um, when it was produced and where it was delivered to. So here's our extract for the vintage. And it looks like it was, the production date was April 17th, 1967. And it was delivered to Italy. So I love that because of the Italian ties in our families. And um, it just brings it full circle for us. But yes, this is definitely the piece that I would say is my most prized possession. And um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So anyway, thanks for uh, letting me... Uh, tell you about my little story and I'm sure there will be more stories to come after me. Hello, David Zritsky from this. Yeah. So Luke, Mr. Taggart to you, asked me to do something that I didn't think was going to be too much of a challenge. I thought it was going to be very simple, but of course it wasn't simple at all because it has to do with emotions and connections to things and so he asked me, of course, as you could tell from these videos, that uh, to basically talk about my favorite watch or series of watches and then rate my favorite. And that's what I'm going to do. And, and I thought it was going to be simple. Like I said, I thought, oh, it, it's got to be, you know, my newest. Because, right, isn't it always the newest one? Because it's new. It's sexy. Uh, this particular one, of course, is the 60th anniversary watch that I got from the Omega Boutique in New York City at the launch party. So I'm like, this is gonna be a no brainer. Of course, it's gotta be this one right here. It's got a lot of storytelling properties to it. Not a lot of history with it, but it's rare. And because it's rare, it's worth a lot. And I started to think, well, isn't that my criteria? And of course, it's not. That's not my criteria for my favorite watch. It's not how much it's worth or how rare it is or that it's the newest one. So then I thought about, well, it's got to be the one that I go to every day. I mean, clearly, right? That's the conclusion. Has to be. So it has to be my Quantum of Solace 42 millimeter Planet Ocean. It's got to be because this is one of the, the one that I put on all the time. What? Tuxedos, shorts, t-shirts. I wear it all the time. It's got to be my Quantum of Solace. And it wasn't because it's still missed on some particular criteria of a watch, and I put in I put in a scenario because this is how I do it. I have to play out little stories in my head. What would be the watch that if the house was on fire and I had my wife over my shoulder, or she could just get out on her own? Let's face it, she's Marion Ravenwood. Which watch would I grab? Which watch would I grab? I did that. Which watch would I grab on the way out of the fire? And I'm. It, it came down to my forty five point five Planet Ocean. Yes, the one from. Casino Royale, I absolutely love it. With the rubber strap, I got the metal strap upstairs, but I grabbed the rubber strap with this and I still wear this a lot. But why? Why is this my favorite? And it came down to what I say about any connection to things or people for that matter. And that is what stories and what journeys have I taken with, in this case, this watch? I've seen my children grow up I've seen promotions, I've seen arguments, I've seen fights, I've found friends, I've lost friends, I've been to exotic locations, I, I've, I've had so many David Zeritsky storytelling moments. Every nick and bruise and blemish that's on this watch represents who I am. It represents a very happy and content life. And it also connects back to my favorite James Bond film. I also like the aesthetics. No, I love the aesthetics of it. I love the real estate of how large it is. And I still think it's unique and yet classic. So if I think about, you know, kind of one of these house hunter moments, like got a fireplace, got a location, this texts off all the criteria, but especially the storytelling and the connection to me, my journey with Bond, my journey with my life, and yes, my journey with Omega watches. So there you go. Casino Royale, 45.5, Planet Ocean wins my favorite watch. Thank you. 
Hey, Jason Oski here for James Bond Classified, and I want to share with you some of my favorite watches and my favorite watch. First of all, I want to share this Atelier Gelepe watch because it's got the face, an Aston Martin DB5 hood. That's the face right there, which I think is pretty cool and honorable mention. Also, my very first Omega, this baby right here. I got this one because it looks a little bit like Sean Connery's own um, Rolex, I was thinking, and I still have the Omega connection, which I've always wanted. But hands down, my favorite Omega is easily the Casino Royale Omega 300 Blue Face, as seen in my favorite movie. I got this one for a couple of reasons. Um, I've always wanted an Omega, so I was really happy to get this one because this is the one I was really after the most. It's got, like I said, the blue face, which is my favorite color. I love it. I think it was so cool. It was really important for some reason. I just really wanted the wave pattern in my watch, too. So that's why the black one has that as well. And this band, I think, is one of the most beautiful watch bands. 41 millimeter, Omega 300, as seen in Casino Royale, which is my favorite movie. I was so thrilled when Casino Royale came out because as being a big fan of the Ian Fleming novels, I really wanted a gritty, gritty take on it, and I was so happy with the movie. I love the movie. I love looking down at my watch. When we were at GoldenEye, one of my dreams was always to go, you know, scuba. We didn't go scuba. We went snorkeling, but it was a beautiful thing. I kept just looking at my watch underwater while we were swimming with all the beautiful coral and fish, and it just, it just makes me happy. It makes me smile. I really like this watch. Um, I've had watches my whole life. I've always been a watch guy. I'm not a watch shamer. I love all my Seikos. I still wear them. Um, and then it's just probably next to sunglasses or right alongside with sunglasses, the greatest accessory of all time. So when Luke asked me to do this, I jumped at the chance to do this. So anyway, Jay Sadowski, James Bond Classified with my favorite watch. Make it a great day. What's up, Luke? It's Joe over at The Average Bond, The Average Joe Podcast. Take your pick. I'm the worst content creator out there. But I want to thank you for asking me to take part in this video that you're putting together. So I'm going to go over a couple pieces uh, and why they're important to me. Now, when I buy a piece, it's usually to reflect a, a milestone in my life. And there's two big milestones that I have the watches that I remember them by. Now, let's go back in time to the year 2004. I had just come home from the army and I had a little extra cash and I always wanted the Bond watch. So I picked up this watch right here. The Omega Seamaster reference number 253180. Uh, this was Omega's intro into the Bond franchise with Goldeneye. Pierce Brosnan wore it. And since then the two brands have almost become synonymous with one another. Had the watch for about 10 years and then I sold it off dumbest move ever and I figured about a year ago I got to have the watch back it, it represents such an important time in my life I need it and after talking with you you convinced me buy the watch as I had it then so I did and I brought it to Omega a few months back and they serviced it and now it sits in my collection brand new second watch this is interesting. This was purchased in 2016. I had to buy it secondhand, so I did pay a premium for it. But in 2015, I had been engaged. And then that engagement just ended. And then I had seen Spectre. And I'm saying to myself, I have all this extra money to spend because I'm no longer paying for a wedding. And I figure, what do I do? I buy a watch. So, after some hunting, I purchased the Spectre watch. This watch is my Grail watch, and it sits in my collection. I wear it when I can, and every time I look down at this watch, I think of how I dodged the bullet, literally. So, this is it. These are my watches that uh, have the most importance in my collection. And I can't wait to hear what other people have in their collections and why they're important. But thank you again for asking me to be part of this. And uh, we'll talk soon, man. Have a good one. Hi, 
I'm Melanie, and along with my feathered friend, you can find us on Instagram at Burb, James Burb. Uh, talking about favorite watches today, um, there's two in particular that I'd like to share. Uh, the first one is the one that I'm wearing right now, which is the uh, Omega Seamaster. This is the Aquaterra. Now, this is the ladies' version. It was seen, worn by Money Penny in Skyfall. Uh, I personally uh, love ladies' watches. I like the smaller, more delicate faces. And uh, there aren't a ton uh, that, that are seen in the Bond franchise. So that's why this one in particular is special. Now, since they don't make as many ladies' watches, uh, I do have to go with the off-brand NATO straps. Um, but I love to wear the NATOs, match it with my outfit. Um, this is also the uh, automatic self-winding mechanical. Uh, always buy mechanical watches. I have a few uh, quartz, which are fun cosmetic watches, but one of the reasons that I love mechanical is um, they're built to last a lifetime. I have a few watches that were passed down to me from my mother and grandmother after they passed away. These were watches that were sitting in drawers, had been forgotten, neglected, uh, and then they ended up landing uh, in my hands. And the mechanical ones wound them up. They work beautifully. The ones with quartz uh, battery corroded, leaked, you know, they, I couldn't wear them anymore. They were non-functional. So um, highly suggest uh, if you're making an investment to get, uh, save up your money, go ahead, splurge for the uh, automatic or mechanical. So on that note, speaking of mechanicals and uh, automatic watches, this is a, uh, oh, Burb. <laughs> He's getting excited over this one. <laughs> this is an Elgin pocket watch. Now this has been in my family for years, for generations. Uh, it is gold. I'll pop it open here so that you can see it. Now, for those who aren't familiar, Elgin was a watchmaker, American, out of Illinois, uh, made watches for about 100 years. And uh, I found out by checking the serial number on this one, this one is actually from 1879. So it's been around for a very long time. Uh, and I hope to pass it down to my own son one day, and I hope it stays in the family for many more generations. Hello, I'm Ryan from the channel Analyze This Mr. Bond, and I'm delighted to be here at Luke's gracious invitation to discuss my favorite timepiece. I've been interested in watches far longer than I've been interested in spy movies or James Bond, and I never pass up the opportunity to talk about them. The watch we're about to discuss is my Grail watch. I picked it up to commemorate a major life change for me. I, I like to use watches to mark major life events. I, I find that that gives them uh, an extra level of resonance and significance to the wearer. Um, this was my dream watch, and it still is my dream watch, I'm happy to say. It is the wonderful Tag Heuer Monaco. This was a limited edition reissue of the original Tag Heuer Monaco that was released um, with the gray dial. Today you can get the same essential model, but with the blue dial. Um, gray dial, the horizontal indices, which is the dial layout worn and popularized by Steve McQueen. But the association with Steve McQueen, as great as it is, uh, doesn't do the watch justice because the watch really stands on its own two feet. It is such a singular watch design, a real triumph. But also, I just love its general sense of fun and flamboyance. That's something that you had in the 1970s. It stood the test of time, I think, because of just how well the design works together, how balanced the dial layout is. Um, it's obviously not a Bond watch. Bond would never wear something so dramatic or flashy, but, uh, you know, it's it's a, such a cool watch, um, and I honestly can't get enough of it. Every time I put it on the wrist, it brings me joy, as a watch should. Um, it's really there to just kind of brighten your day, be an everyday accessory that makes you smile, and 
the Hoyer Monaco does that for me like no other watch. So thanks, Luke, and have a great holiday season, everyone. Hey, folks, Bud West here with the Bond Brain with my favorite timepiece. Now, I am a man who owns about a dozen watches, and they range anywhere in price from, you know, several hundred to several thousand. But the one that's always on my wrist seems to be one that fits somewhere in the middle. Back during the release of No Time to Die, I was in the market for a new dive watch. And on jamesbondlifestyle.com, I came across the Hamilton Khaki Navy Diver. Now, I put this one back in the case just to showcase the case here, folks, because look at this thing. It looks like a Navy portal on a ship. It's such a cool case, and uh, it's probably the coolest watch case I, I, I've ever received uh, a new timepiece in. Now, why is this the watch that's, that's always on my wrist? Well, one, any diver with a rubber strap, a silicone strap, these timepieces are great with jeans. They're great with jeans and a t-shirt. They're great with jeans and a polo. Not to mention the fact that this, folks, is the timepiece that is always on my wrist for all of life's adventures. I have worn this kayaking, skiing, swimming, snorkeling, hiking, and quite frankly, folks, I beat the hell out of my dive, my dive watches, and so that's why I always want one that I can kind of beat on. I have banged this thing off of trees. I have banged this off of the side of a canoe. I've gone over the mountain bars of my, uh, excuse me, the handlebars of my mountain bike and smashed it into the ground. And just recently on a trip to Egypt to see the pyramids, my wife and I were descending down a very narrow passageway inside one of the pyramids as part of the tour. And I kind of half slipped and, and smashed this thing into the granite on the side of the wall. And I really thought when I got to the bottom of that descent, I was going to see a smashed crystal. Not only did I not see a smashed crystal, there's not... Uh, a scratch on this thing that there's it's just not there not only not a scratch on the crystal there's not even a scratch on the bezel so this thing has held up really well it's an automatic so i just throw in the winding box if i'm not going to wear it for a couple days and it's been a great timepiece i am very glad glad that i bought it it showed up on jamesbondlifestyle.com because it is the wristwatch that's on the primo's wrist during the material scenes so that's it, folks. The Hamilton Khaki Navy Diver, great luminescence, rugged watch. Love it. Wear it all the time. That's all I have for you. Back to you, Luke. Hey, everybody. Kyle Barbeau, Instagram's Easy Smiles and Expensive Watches, here to talk about my favorite watch in my collection, uh, which is this one. It is the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter, uh, as seen in the James Bond movies Tomorrow Never Dies, The World Is Not Enough, and Die Another Day. Why this one? Well, it's the first one I ever got, and the story behind it really um, is what makes it special. Tomorrow Never Dies was the first James Bond movie I ever saw. It was actually this man here, my grandfather, who took me to see it uh, on my 10th birthday. And I fell in love with James Bond right then and there, uh, and one of the things that really caught my imagination was the watch, and, and I always wanted one. I feel like that experience is responsible for, you know, who I am now. Fast forward to a few years later, right around the time Die Another Day came out, and my grandfather came over for dinner one night, and he was in a bit of a, an agitated state, we'll say. He was a pretty vivacious, uh, gregarious man, and he was talking about how the Little Sisters of the Poor had come to his business that day to uh, solicit for donations. And as generous as a guy he was, um, he was, he was in a bit of a mood, and I, you know, impressed him as to why, and he's like, yep, yeah, those nuns, they really stuck me for a lot of money. They, they should be working for me. They're such good salespeople. Turns out what had happened is he had exaggerated his uh, generosity and said that he would buy a whole bunch of raffle tickets, and the raffle tickets were $100 a piece, which was a pretty expensive raffle. So when he showed me the brochure of uh, raffle prizes, it was pretty good. I mean, the first prize I think was a car. I think there was a set of golf clubs, a lot of really good raffle prizes. And one of them was a cash prize. And I saw this and said, oh, look, you know, $1,000, $2,000, however much it was. 
that's enough money to buy the Omega watch that uh, Pierce Brosnan wears as James Bond. Well, if I win, I'll buy you the watch. Okay. I forgot about it. Um, you know, just, yeah, there he goes, shooting his mouth off. What else is new? Until a few weeks later, when I got a phone call, and he said, I've got something to tell you. Do you remember that raffle that the Little Sisters of the Poor were putting on? Well, I won, and uh, I'm a man of my word. So a week or two go by, and uh, he took me out to dinner and slid across the table the red leather box that had this watch in it. So uh, this is the most treasured piece in my watch collection, and I will have it for the rest of my life. Hi, everyone. Connor Bentley, Conmon007 here. Um, the most special watch in my collection is this Seiko SKX009. And a lot of people think that when they see it, it's the 007. And obviously, given the fact that I love James Bond, I think people want to think it's the 007. But the 007 is black. Because Bond wore a lot of black face watches. I think, and that's probably why it's called that. This one is obviously the Pepsi bezel with the blue face. So that's the 009. Um, I really love this watch. Um, I think it's just got a lot of the stuff that you want in kind of a dive watch. It's got a very sort of generic dive watch look about it. Um, and I think that, you know, it looks very similar to a lot of the famous dive watches that you see people wearing, especially in the Bond community with the Omegas. But I really love this Seiko. First of all, because I think it's a great value for uh, what it cost, and obviously Seiko is a Bond brand, so that makes it special in that way too. Um, but I just love the look of it. I think it's a great looking watch. I think the Pepsi bezel is really kind of unique. You don't see a lot of watches like that, at least I don't. Um, although I have run into quite a few people who have this watch, and it's cool when you kind of meet your watch twin. And I think that makes it special too, um, when you kind of see someone else out in the wild and you're like, hey. Um, the other thing I like about this watch is the bracelet. Um, it's kind of got that link style bracelet, um, sort of Rolex style, which I really like this style of uh, watch bracelet. It reminds me of a watch that my dad had growing up that was stolen, unfortunately, but my dad had an Omega Speedmaster with a Rolex band, and this band reminds me of that band, and so I think growing up seeing him wearing that band uh, made me kind of gravitate toward this, and it's also similar to the band that um, Sean Connery has on his Breitling watch in Thunderball, which I think is a really cool looking watch, and I think the band is part of what makes that cool. Um, so, the Seiko SKX009 is my most special watch. Hello, Jocelyn Sia here with Ladies Who Bond, and I have two special watches in my watch collection. Neither one of them are actually um, Omegas or uh, really expensive watches, so to speak, um, but they're special watches nonetheless um, to me, and I guess for me, a special watch means that it has a lot of sentimental value. So the first one I've got is this one. Yeah, it's 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 a golden eye watch. Um, this watch was given to me by my brother. I think it came from Etsy or something like that. But it, it's super special because my brother and I actually spent a lot of time growing up together, um, playing N sixty four, um, specifically Golden Eye. So every time I wear this watch and I see it in the sun, it just kind of takes me back to when we spent all that time. Um, playing uh, Golden Eye and and doing slappers only in the versus mode and that kind of stuff. So uh, it it holds a lot of a lot of um, a lot of great memories for me. The second watch in my collection, um, I've I've changed out the strap, but it is the Mission to the Moon Omega Swatch watch. Um, this one was gifted to me on my birthday um, from my lovely, lovely husband who tolerates my Bond habits. Uh, I'm not in the position to own an Omega just yet, but when these watches came out, um, I wasn't in a huge hurry to, to buy one, but I had mentioned it to my husband, and, and he is such a doll and sweetheart, and he went out of his way to find one for me. And we all know all the crazy ruckus that had happened from trying to secure one of these watches, and 
when he surprised me for my birthday, it was just completely unexpected and and um, I feel super lucky. So those are my two watches in my special collection. Um, I've got more watches along the way, but until then, these will stay up on top in terms of special for me. How's it going everybody? Christopher Morales, so that one Bond guy. I hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, I know my good buddy of mine, Luke Taggart from Bond's apartment asked if I could share my most favorite watch story. Um, and then when I think about my most favorite watch, I have to go back to my first, my Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean from Skyfall. As you can see, I'm appropriately dressed for the occasion. Um, but no, yes, it is the one we see Bond wearing in the pre-title sequence, as you can see here. Um, it definitely is a story of hard work, dedication, and uh, the reward behind it. It was when I was... Let's say, I, I believe I started saving for it in, in my senior year of high school and got through community college the first two years and just continued to save money to work. Uh, again, I was a full-time college student as well as part-time working at uh, Starbucks. And I continued to just grind and work because I had a goal set in mind. I was trying to figure out between which watch would I, you know, get for my very first Bond Omega watch because I knew I wanted a Bond Omega, I just didn't know which one. And thankfully I had some amazing resources, shout outs to Lorenzo from Omega Bond Watches that kind of helped me narrow it down to a watch that not only represented Bond, but also represented me. And uh, this was the winner right here. So I have a full in-depth um, video on my YouTube. So feel free to check that out on my acquirement of this watch. But I, it, it just shows, you know, I was just, you know, anybody, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. And it may take a little bit longer than other people, but if you create a goal and you work hard towards it, you get an amazing reward. And uh, this has definitely gone on some very Bondian and fun adventures. And I've just been blessed um, to have it and enjoy it and uh, create even more stories in the future because I think only one of these guys, the best part is the story, right? So anyways, that's my story um, of my most favorite watch. Uh, this one definitely takes the cake for that uh, just because all the work that it took to get here. Um, and there's some more goodies that came along with it as well from the seller who was actually a James Bond fan himself, which it just was full circle and I loved it. So anyways, I hope you guys continue to have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, or whatever it may be. I'm Christopher Morales, that one Bond guy. Take care. Good evening, Bond fans. I This is your field agent, Jason Kim, invited by your gracious co-host, Luke Taggart, to share my favorite Bond memorabilia or watches. And I'm going to share that while I'm drinking some Blackwell rum from Jamaica. The first watch I wanted to share with you guys is as a real life scientist for the Department of Defense, the Q Swatch. And the reason why it's sentimental to me is not because of my profession, but I received this on the day that, that we received the news that No Time Die will be postponed for six months, 18 months, you know, which eventually became 18 months. And it was a good consolation prize for me while I waited No Time Die eagerly. Next watch I had is the Seiko a calendar bank from Moonraker and just in case if I if me and hot Dr. Holly Goodhead ever get stuck in a missile silo I had the explosives ready to make my getaway escape with her this watch while it doesn't have any gadgets has become one of my favorite watches and we're ready to wear is the Hamilton PSR from live and let the, that which was worn by sir also worn by sir Roger Moore in the beginning of live and let die but the reason why it's also bec it's become a very easy, um, go my, it's one of my easy go-to watches. And I've been wearing this quite a lot as well because a Korean actor by the name of, actor by the name of Daniel Henney, he wore it in a Korean action movie called Confidential Assignment. And while this next watch is not a Bond watch I screen accurate item, it's my go-to watch for my travels. It's the Hamilton GMT. And like the Spectre GMT, it's also a bi-directional bezel. And so as a tr worldwide traveler that I am, I can keep up with different time zones with my family and friends in America, as well as my friends in 
overseas if I'm in North Africa or Europe so I could keep up with all the different time zones so I could communicate at the appropriate times. I hope everyone has a safe and happy holidays and I hope to meet you guys all again in 2024. Cheers. I'm Matt Spazer of Bond Suits. My most special watch is my Omega Speedmaster Day Date from 2001. Received it as a very special gift for a very special occasion. While it's not a Bond watch, it is from a Bond brand. The Bond connection through the brand is pretty much enough for me. I would like to have a Bond watch, you know, a real one, but this is doing a fantastic job and it has been for the past uh, 22 years. Now, Bond inspired me to want this watch both because of the brand and because of this blue color. I don't think the blue color is quite showing up in the video the way it looks in real life, but it's, um, it's really a beautiful color. And uh, that the Brosnan uh, Seamaster, just in, in that, that blue, and the way he wears it with everything has made it really apparent to me that the blue watches do go with everything. And the blue of this watch, it does, I love how the, the color actually changes depending on the light. It's just such a, an interesting color. And after wearing it for 22 years, I don't get bored of looking at it. It's, it's, it is definitely a very busy watch, but that busyness does keep it interesting. And uh, the chronograph feature is very useful for timing mundane tasks like uh, cooking or laundry or making sure I don't take too long of a lunch break. Now, it's a very sporty watch because it is a chronograph, but the small 39 millimeter size makes it small enough to wear underneath a nice cocktail cuff like this one from Turnbull and Asser. Now, I did get another watch to wear when I'm dressing up, and this vintage gold watch from Jules Jurgensen is, is what I wear if I'm wearing a black tie or usually even a very nice suit. Um, Connery's unidentified gold watches that he wears in most of his Bond films was probably the main inspiration for this watch. But um, it still comes second to having a Bond brand like Omega. Hey, hello everyone, it's Joe the Bond Enthusiast and let's talk Omega watches. So I own two of them and my current daily watch is the large size Planet Ocean from the beginning of Casino Royale. And I love this watch a lot, mostly because of the larger size of the face. Uh, I also like the black rubber strap a lot. It gives it this kind of an understated, not flashy, almost an ordinary look. Now, I know that might not be what a lot of people are going for when they buy a watch like this, but I found it never hurts to be a little bit more incognito when you're wearing a, an expensive piece of jewelry out all the time. You never really want to be a magnet for the bad guys out there. Now, my sentimental favorite is the Brosnan Era Seamaster Professional Automatic version, and it's a favorite of mine for really two reasons. It was the first Omega watch I ever owned, and the second is the journey to owning it. So it really caught my attention when he wore it in Tomorrow Never Dies. And when I found out that they had made the decision to use the same watch again in The World Is Not Enough, that was kind of my key. Like, I, I had to find this watch and buy it. Now, if you think about the time frame I'm talking about here, we're talking 1998, 1999. I actually bought the watch in November of 1999 was when it actually happened. But if you think about this time, it's before things like Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. There's no iPhones or Android phones. Off the top of my head, I can't even think of any Bond websites that existed yet. We had some internet web forums, but they were really just starting to become a thing, so not a lot of information on them. And heck, even Omega boutique stores didn't exist yet. I had to call an 800 number to find my closest authorized reseller, and even then I got that number out of a magazine ad. Um, it seems crazy at the time. Turns out my closest authorized reseller was about a 45-minute drive from where I was living at the time, and it was just a locally owned jewelry store. Um, I gave them a call, and as luck would have it, they had one of the watches in stock. So uh, that night after work, I drove up, checked it out, and as they say, the rest is history. So there you have it, my journey to uh, owning and enjoying some Omega watches. So thanks for watching. Take care. Hi, I'm Sarah. This is Jordan, Designing Vaughn on Instagram. 
and I'm going to tell a little bit about why I asked for this watch from my wonderful fiance. So growing up, my mom always had this beautiful Omega. She had this Omega constellation that I would always be watching while I was in church. I would be looking at her jewelry and how it glimmered in the light. And I'd always ask her, you know, when are you going to give me this watch? When are you going to give me this ring? And eventually she told me, you know, when I pass away, God forbid. And I was like, I'm not going to wait for that to have this beautiful watch. So I started asking Jordan for it and he ended up finding it and the exact same one that my mom had. So he purchased this beautiful Omega constellation for me with the mother of pearl face, right? That's yeah. what the mother of pearl and I adore it. I wear it every single day. It is a staple in my wardrobe and I couldn't be happier that he purchased it for me. So I'm very grateful to him for that. <laughs> uh, growing up, I really liked James Bond and then I remember seeing Dr. No for the first time and I really liked the watch that I saw. So I um, ended up finding this micro brand, uh, Vare Watches, and uh, I think it was about $400, but an affordable dive watch. Uh, it looked just like uh, Sean Connery's first watch. So really enjoy it. This is Ryan, AKA Tiki Bond on Instagram. And these are the two most important watches in my life. Starting now, we have this Bon Mercier quartz movement with the moon phase and the astrological signs and the date. This was actually purchased uh, by my father in the uh, late eighties. He had uh, two luxury watches, uh, one for each of his sons. And uh, this is the second one he purchased. Definitely a uh, dress watch of that time. The uh, strap is aftermarket. It's not a very good one. Doesn't really fit that well. So I'm probably gonna be upgrading that once I get a uh, time to put in a new battery and everything and try and make it more of a dress piece, something the suit or tuxedo. It does have, um, it has a date, you know, the, the calendar wheel. You can see how far I can get in there. You can see the zodiac signs. Pretty interesting. This is my Planet Ocean 2201.50.00 that I purchased uh, before the uh, release of No Time to Die in 2021. I actually made a goal to save the cash to purchase this before the movie released. So it was a big sacrifice uh, working from home trying to scrimp and save and uh, made sure that I got it a few months before the release. Uh, I actually purchased it on the anniversary of Ian Fleming's death. And so it's kind of a big deal. I actually uh, wanted this watch for a long time, since 2008 when the movie came out. I saw that movie with my now wife, Crystal. We were just dating then. And so it's kind of a journey to get to here. And it's definitely my daily wear. Um, I just love the dial. I love the uh, machining. It uh, sounds perfect. I'm only the second owner. So wrapping up, uh, these are the uh, two watches I selected to talk about. Uh, this is Tiki Bond, signing off. Hey guys, DJ Henderson here. Um, when Luke asked me to make this video, um, talking about my favorite watch or my most special watch, um, one watch really didn't jump out at me as I thought about it. Um, you know, with all watches that and most of you guys know this every watch tells a story so I really had to stop and think about it and just look at the watches and, and just remember the story associated with them and just kind of think that over um, as I looked at each one I mean the Spectre watch my favorite movie um, it really jumped out at me um, probably the first time I really wanted something that Bond wore um, just fell in love with that watch. Got a bait strap and a fossil watch and just just so I could have that look of the NATO and everything. But um, that's not my favorite. As, as I went through the, the memories and everything, I came to the conclusion that the 60th that I picked up this summer... Um, is my favorite and I'll tell you guys why. Love the, the blue dial. I mean, we all grew up loving the, the watch from GoldenEye and the wave, uh, you know, the wave part of it and 
the lollipop second hand, you know, with the Spectre vibes. Um, I just love the look of this watch. It's probably, in my opinion, the, the most beautiful watch in my collection, but um, that's not the reason why I chose it. Um, I chose it because of the memory associated with it. Um, we picked this up in Paris this summer, and as you guys know, these watches are still hard to get here in the United States, and we were uh, enjoying a vacation in Europe, and ended up walking by an Omega boutique, and walking in, I was wearing the Spectre watch, and struck up a conversation about James Bond, like, uh, like you do, you know, uh, when somebody notices a Bond item or something like that. Um, the guy told me that they had the uh, No Time to Die and asked if I wanted to see it, but I told him that I that I owned the No Time to Die and, and, and love that watch. It's a, it's a beautiful watch as well. But uh, he then went on to tell me that they had just gotten a 60th in and it was in the back. And I asked him, was it for sale? Uh, expecting him to say no. And to my surprise, he said yes. So. Um, he went and got it, brought it out, and I, I just immediately fell in love with it. I mean, just everything that I just told you guys about it. I mean, we all know what the back looks like. It's just an amazing, beautiful piece, but um, my wife wouldn't let me pass it up. She said if I didn't buy it, she was going to buy it, so obviously she's a keeper. Um, but that's, uh, that's why this is my favorite watch. I have, always have that memory of, you know, not only the the, uh, ex the experience at Omega, you know, champagne and, 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 and buying the watch and, and talking watches, but just that, the memory of that whole uh, two weeks of that vacation is wrapped up in, in, in this watch here. And that's, uh, that's pretty special to me. And it's something that I'll always cherish and um, hope to uh, make more memories like that one day. Thanks guys. Alex Lamas from the YouTube channel, Always Say Yes to Adventure. So Luke was kind enough to ask me to share some of my watch collection. But before we do that, how about a watch check? This is my Certina Action Diver. Let's get started. So as you can see, this is a rather modest watch collection. No real luxury watches, simply because the phrase, this is why we can't have nice things, was something I heard a lot from my parents growing up. They tend to be a bit rough on my stuff. And you can tell from my lifestyle, most of these are action watches or action oriented. A lot of divers and uh, racing chronographs. I got one dress watch, the Tissot Gentleman, and that's about it. So some of my favorites, well, of course, the SKX 007, which was one of the first watches I ever purchased uh, recently. And then I have my diver's watch that I used for actual diving. This is the Seiko Turtle. It's a great diving watch. You can see it really well underneath the water and it can take a beating. It's a real tool watch. And then also one of my favorites, which I don't really go diving with, but it has a very, you know, bit of a bond connection was the uh, Islander watch that I modded myself. So I love Timothy Dalton's The Living Daylights. I loved his watch. I don't want to have the hassle of having a, um, a vintage watch and having to spend all that money on getting it together. So I decided with the resources that Islander had to build my own sort of homage watch to the um, the Hoyer watch that he wears. Of course, it's a white dial, a fully loom dial, fully black bezel. It came with a black bracelet, but I love rubber straps and I found the perfect rubber strap that sort of resembles the, the bracelet that Timothy Dalton wears. So this one has special meaning for me, especially since I built it myself. And it's an homage to one of my favorite Bond films and to one of my favorite Bond actors, Dalton in The Living Daylights. So that's about it. I want to 
thank Luke for asking me to be a part of his video. And I also want to do one more watch check. I drive a British Racing Green Mini Cooper Turbo, and I got this Stratton to match the car. All right. Anyway, go to Always Say Yes to Adventure on YouTube for lots of great action videos. Bye. Hey, everybody from Bond's apartment. My name is Josh Brown, and uh, Luke kindly invited me on to talk about my watch collection. So let's get right into it. Um, this first is just like a frivolous little piece that was from Swatch. They put out a few years ago, and I got the Dr. No one. Uh, I bought it just because I thought it was the coolest. Um, not because I have any huge connection to that movie. It's the first Bond movie. It's awesome, but you know, it's not my favorite Bond movie, but I thought the design was the best on this one. Um, and, uh, it has a cool little nose around the face of it. To be honest, I've only worn it probably like 10 times, but you know, it was like 75 bucks. So this, I haven't given it away. I haven't sold it. I don't know. It's fun. What the hell? That's what watches are all about. Uh, except for this next one. Uh, my best friend, one of my best friends, just bought me this G-Shock. And, uh, I hate G-Shocks. And he knows I hate G-Shocks. And yet, he still spent his hard-earned money on getting me this. Uh, he used to like, quote-unquote, real watches. But the last couple of years, he's been all about these. And has been wanting me to get one for literally two and a half years. And he got me one. And I hate it. It's ugly. It tells the time. Yeah, but, I mean, who cares? But, you know, I'm still wearing it. I'll put it on my wrist once in a while and just stare at it and berate it and tell it it's ugly and useless and, you know. But it's a G-Shock. It can take it. It can take the physical and the mental abuse. Well, we'll find out. Anyways, uh, my most worn, oldest watch, I guess, aside from the Mickey Mouse one I have at my parents' place still, uh, is this watch. And it's a Vitorinox Swiss Army. Obviously, I threw the NATO band on it. The uh, No Time to Die didn't come with that. Um, yeah, I was a younger musician. Younger. And this is about 20 years ago, and I was just doing my first world tour. I'd done tours before, but never ending on this, you know, size and scale. And uh, I was living in New York City at the time, and uh, there was a Vitorinox store down in Soho. And on my breaks between legs of tours, I would uh, walk by the store and see this in the window. And I loved it. And I didn't know anything about watches. I just knew I loved the way it looked. And I said to myself, you know what? When I finish this tour to commemorate it, I'm going to buy myself a nice watch. You know, it was 500 bucks. And uh, it was funny. When I went in to buy it, like I said, I knew nothing about watches. I just knew what I liked. Uh, the person selling it to me was like, oh, this is a great stepping stone to a, a Rolex sub. And I remember saying to him, like, right, well, I don't want a Rolex sub. I want this watch. If I wanted a Rolex sub, I'd go buy one. And I kind of remember him looking at me like, whatever, kid. <laughs> so anyways, I still love it. It's a great watch. Whenever I see someone walk by on the street who wears it, I, I kind of catches my eye. I'm like, oh, I have that watch. And uh, it's great. It's you know, it was on the road with me for like 20 years of serious major touring. And uh, you can't, uh, yeah, 20 years probably on the road. Even when I got a uh, Rolex Daytona, um, I, still, I, I still brought the uh, Swiss Army on the road with me because, you know, there's just some instances you just can't wear this traveling. It's unfortunate, but true. You know, one of our crew members was mugged outside of a hotel in Buenos Aires. Uh, like literally right in front of our hotel and they stole his Rolex sub right off his wrist. So, you know, you just can't wander around with a really nice watch that is a recognizable brand in the, everywhere in the world. So, yeah, even when I was traveling and when I was touring, this would always be in my backpack. And I'd pull it out and uh, it's been a real war horse, you know. And one of the other things I liked about it was that I've always been attracted to divers because I would say that aside from being on stage, the place that I'm most comfortable is maybe in the water and I love swimming with a watch on I think it's a really sexy thing to like look into the water and see you know the glow of your watch you know, something really cool to me so great watch um 
and then it moves on to my actually a week after I got the G-Shock I got this and this was something I had wanted for ages it's the uh well a bigger version of the Skyfall uh Planet Ocean 45 millimeter and uh it's also a beast in the tank and it hasn't been in water yet but I can't wait for uh this summer or maybe sooner if uh, I can get some nice water. Um, yeah, this was something I, I guess the watch that really got me into watches when I really started delving into it was uh, when I saw Casino Rail and I saw the watch on its wrist and I was like, oh man, that's really nice. What is that? And then obviously, like all of us, that's how it goes. So uh, this is my newest watch. And to be honest, I'm looking forward to making 20 years more of awesome memories with this watch and uh i guess that's my collection small but uh it might grow a little bit but that's what i got uh right now and uh hope you enjoyed thanks luke My favorite watch in my collection is this Omega Seamaster 300M Quartz. This is the first Omega watch ever worn by James Bond in a movie. It's worn by Pierce Brosnan in GoldenEye and also by Alec Trevelyan in the same movie. And I love it because it represents the James Bond watch of the Bond that I grew up with in the cinema. I love the blue bezel of the watch. I love the blue dial with the subtle wave pattern in there and the little red or orange tip of the second hand. Also very beautiful is the case back with the wave pattern engraved embossed hippo compass symbol of the Seamaster. And it wears great. Um, it's very comfortable on the wrist, easy to put on. The bracelet is very smooth and beautiful with the double links. Omega Seamaster logo on the clasp. It's super practical with the quartz movement. Um, you might have to change the battery once every two years. But because I have a lot of watches I like to have a watch that always is ready to go when I want to take, put it on. Also, I love the built-in laser. Very practical. Overall, I can highly recommend this watch as your first James Bond Omega. Wait, how many times did I click this?